Alright guys, so we're going to learn about databases today and programming against databases. Uh, we're really going to start from the ground up here, but it would be very helpful if you knew what a database is, what a table is, what a column is, and uh, probably what a SQL statement does. And it would also be helpful if you know the, the basics of the C-sharp language and object-oriented programming. So if you have no idea what a database is, we can create one here in a few seconds. Go to File, New File, Add a Text File, Bob, Bill, 123. So we have a database. We have a place where we have stored data. In this case, it's a text file, and that's referred to as a flat file database. And if you support legacy systems, uh, this is going to be pretty familiar to you. It's still very much alive. But we're not here to create text files. Get out of here. Yeah. So we're going to create a SQL Server database, which is a going to be a relational database. So we'll go ahead and file new project. I'm going to make it a WinForms project. I'm going to name it Cookbook. So we're going to create an application and a database that stores recipes. So I'm going to hit OK. OK, so we're not going to worry about the uh, interface right now or code or anything we're gonna skip straight to the database so right click on your project hit add new item and I'm gonna pause here and say if you're using Visual Studio 2008 or 2010 your options are gonna look a little bit different your database designer is gonna look different so it's up to you if you want to try and figure it out with your version of the software or if you want to download the Express Edition of 2013 and follow along with me exactly. So I'm going to go down to service based database. I'm going to name it cookbook. And you'll see it appear here in our solution explorer and also in the server explorer. If you don't have the server explorer window go to view server explorer so expand your cookbook database and of course we don't have any tables let's go ahead and add new table so the first table we're gonna create is the recipe table so that will store recipes what are the odds um, first you're gonna see down here where it is giving us the script to create the table so I'm going to change the name to recipe and you'll notice Visual Studio has given us a primary key column of ID. That's pretty standard for a lot of tables, so I like that. I'm going to keep that. It's an integer value, and I'm going to go over here and hit is identity. I'm going to set that to true by double clicking in that field. And what that means, it's going to increment the value of the primary key by one each time you insert a new record. That's what's going to keep your rows unique. So what should a recipe have? It should have probably a name. I'm going to go with invarchar50. No nulls. Um, prep time. And we'll say that's in minutes, so we'll go with a small int. No nulls. And instructions on how to prepare it. And we'll make that sort of a invarchar max so that's kind of a free form text field. No nulls. Okay, so this table's ready to go. I'm going to hit update and hit update database. And Visual Studio will do all of that for us. Update completed successfully. Okay, so let's add another table. First of all, we can hit refresh here and see our new table. I'm going to right click, add another table. Again, it gives us the ID column, and I'm going to set it as an identity column. Um, for ingredient, the only thing I want to store is name, just to keep things really simple. So go in varchar 50 again. And I'll change the name down here to ingredient. Update. Update. So that's done. I'm going to add one more table. And this one's a little bit trickier if you're not familiar with database basics. 
So this is going to be an associative table, and what that means is it's a table which its function is to relate ingredients and recipes. It creates an association between them. So again, I want the identity column, and I'm going to type recipe ID, and I'm going to pause right here and say if you don't know what a foreign key is or how a foreign key works, you probably need to pause the video and go look that up or this won't make much sense to you. It's really simple to understand. It's a reference to the primary key of another table. So this is going to be an int, okay, because the recipe ID field is an int. No nulls. And then we also want an ingredient ID. I'm going to change this to int also. No nulls. So right now these columns we could programmatically um, have these function as foreign keys but the database right now is ignorant to the fact that they're primary keys so we're going to go over here to foreign keys we're going to click add new foreign key and if you click down here it will add the script for it I'm going to name this recipe foreign key so it wants to know what column is serving as the foreign key that's going to be recipe ID and what what column from which table does this foreign key reference? It references the recipe table and the ID column on that table. Okay, so I'm going to copy this line and we need to do the same thing for ingredient. I'll type ingredient foreign key. Ingredient ID. It references the ingredient table and the ID column on that table. Up here I'm going to change the name to recipe ingredient which is just sort of a standard naming convention I like to use for my associative tables. Okay so this looks good. We're going to hit update, update database. So our database structure is now complete. So next we're going to work on shoving some data in there and pulling it out with SQL queries.